Hey, what's up everybody? Clifton here with Clifton WP. Welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to create a simple and elegant drop down in our website using the cadence theme, the cadence blocks add on, and also the cadence mega menu feature. As a matter of fact, we're going to be creating a drop down that is exactly like the one you see on the cadence website at cadencewp.com. And in this drop down, you're going to be able to have an icon, a title, and you also a little description. Uh, in the sub menu whenever people hover over the main menu. So if you guys are ready to learn how to create some elegant drop downs in your Cadence websites, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're gonna be building. If you look at the Cadence website and you go to their one of their drop downs like this one, right? You notice over here that the drop down menu items have a lot more information that typically comes in your default install of the theme. So we've got a title, we have uh, an icon, and we have a description for each item. Same thing on this one as well. We have a single column one here as well. Okay, so we are gonna be doing the same thing and to show you an example of that, of a finished product. So here is a website and over here you can see the traditional and regular drop down that you would normally get after you set up your menus. And if we hover over the pricing though, we now have a very similar uh, drop down to the one that we saw on the Cadence website. So without further ado, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you from scratch every single step that it takes for us to get to this point. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have a fresh install of WordPress and a install of the Cadence theme along with it. That's why it looks like this. So if you don't have Cadence theme installed, this is very easy to do. Just go ahead and go to your WordPress site, go to the dashboard, then go to appearance, go to themes, and click on add new. And you're gonna search for Cadence. Now the Cadence theme is a free theme. That's probably one of the best block-based themes in the WordPress repository for building websites using Gutenberg blocks or Cadence blocks. So this is it right here. Go ahead and activate the theme and install it. And that will get you to this point where you're looking at the uh, themed WordPress install with the Cadence theme. Now let's also go ahead and go over the plugins that I also have installed as well. There, is about, there are about four plugins that I want you to be aware of. So if I go to my installed plugins over here, I have the Cadence Blocks plugin. This is a free plugin, okay? And to add this plugin to your uh, WordPress install, just go to Add New, do a search for Cadence Blocks, and you'll see it right here, okay? Go ahead and uh, install that and activate it as well so that you will have it, okay? So let's go back to the plugins. And then in addition to that, I also have Cadence Starter Templates. And the reason I have the Starter Templates installed is because Cadence Starter Templates gives you access to both free and pro starter templates that you can use in your Cadence install, right? So this way you can go ahead and launch a full-blown website uh, and start building from there. And we need it for this one because I'm just gonna be showing you the dropdown and I didn't wanna create an entire website just for that. So we're gonna be using a starter template to be able to do that. And that's why I have Cadence Starter Templates. You can go ahead and install that in your uh, install as well. Okay, and then there are two additional plugins that I'm gonna highlight here. I have the Cadence Pro Premium add-on for the Cadence theme. And the reason I have this is because you're gonna need the Elements feature. So if I go to Appearance, under Cadence right here, uh, I have these pro add-ons. And what we're gonna be using to create our dropdown is gonna be this hooked element right here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that on now. We're gonna need this, and we're gonna also need the ultimate menu feature as well, okay? That's what's, these two are basically gonna allow us to create that customized dropdown that you can see over here uh, on the Cadence website. We're gonna create this exact thing. All right, so to be able to do that, I need these two as well, and that is available in the Cadence Pro Theme add-on. So if you don't have that, it's very easy to get. You can just go ahead and go to cliftonwp.com slash cadence, and that will take you to the Cadence website. That is an affiliate link. So all that means is that if you end up purchasing the Cadence uh, Pro add-on uh, while you're here, 
through that link, then I will get a small commission that basically goes to support the channel. You don't have to do that, but it is very much appreciated if you do. And thank you in advance for those of you that, uh, that do that. All right. So once you get over here, go to pricing and under pricing, you're going to see three options at a very minimum. You're going to need the essential bundle, but you can also get the full bundle as well. In the essential bundle, you'll get Cadence Blocks Pro, Cadence Theme Pro, and then you get access to the Pro Starter templates and Cadence Custom Fonts. And with this, you can go ahead and that will allow you to follow along with this tutorial. If you get the full bundle, though, you do get access to all the other plugins that Cadence has to offer, and they offer some pretty awesome, amazing plugins. One of them is the Cadence WooCommerce Shop Kit. If you haven't checked that out, I have a video on this. Go ahead and check it out. It's a great plugin for you to extend your WooCommerce or e-commerce website that you've built with WordPress, okay? And a host of all the other ones as well. They also have a full-time uh, bundle, and this is what I have. I highly recommend getting this if you're building websites for clients or friends or and you wanna be able to just pay one price and have access to everything for a lifetime, including access to all their future products. Uh, it is well worth the investment. But of course, you don't have to do that. You can just get started here and you'll have everything that you need to really build a cool website and cool drop down. Okay. All right. So now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and go back to our site here. And once you install the cadence pro theme add on, then you'll have access to all these pro add ons. And then uh, you need to toggle on the hooked elements and then also toggle on the ultimate menu as well. Okay. Then there's just one more plugin over here. I have the cadence blocks pro extension. So the pro extension does come in the bundle. So if you have a bundle, then you also have access to the Cadence Blocks Pro extension. Also install this as well. And what this allows you to do is you get to be able to add some of the pro blocks that come into Cadence Blocks Pro into your menu if you want to, okay? And it also gives you access to some additional features. So once you have Cadence Blocks Pro extension installed, Cadence Blocks, Cadence Pro, the premium add-on for Cadence Theme, and then the Cadence Starter Templates, you are ready to go, and we can go ahead and start building out our mega menu for our website, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with that right now. So the first thing that we need to do is we need a website. So let's go ahead and access the Starter Templates Library. I'm gonna go over here to Dashboard, okay? Go to Appearance, under Cadence, you're gonna see Starter Templates, click on that. All right, and these are all the starter templates that are available to you. There is a lot of them. All of them are very beautiful uh, templates and well built, and they're they make a great starting point for you to get started in uh, in any website project that you want to build in a, in a number of different niches. One thing to make sure of is when you're here, make sure you have the Gutenberg option selected over here, and we're just going to pick a starter template to be able to use. The one I recommend using is this one right here for this specific tutorial. This is the barbecue beer fest template. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. So let's just click on this one. There it is right here. Looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and install the full site. Okay, I'm gonna click on start importing. Okay, our template is installed. Let's go ahead and view the site. All right, everything here looks great. I'm just gonna look through it. Yeah, all right, so our full site is installed. I'm noticing there's some broken images here and there's a broken image here. Sometimes that happens with the uh, install. This is very easy to fix. Just if this happens to you, just go to edit page and then pay a visit to that particular block, which is the gallery block. I'm gonna go ahead and select it, click on edit, make sure that both the images are, are there, which they are, and update the gallery. And then I think it happened here as well. This is another version of a um, advanced gallery. Make sure all the images are there. Click on update gallery, click on update. And then when we view the page again, you'll see that everything is loaded correctly. Okay, everything looks great. All right, so our focus is gonna be the menu here. And over here, I can see under the pages, we already have a drop down menu. So we're gonna replicate this menu, but we're gonna replicate it as a custom drop down menu that looks similar to what we have over here on the cadence. Uh, on the Cadence website. So we wanna create the same exact um, drop-down menu. What, we, what I like about it is that it has the rounded corners. It allows for additional information after the, uh, after the main menu item. So there's a little bit of a description there and it has an icon, so it looks really good. And then on hover, you can see there is a underline that shows up below that. So we're gonna create the same effect 
on our own website as well and we're going to do it here uh, on this menu that we have over here okay all right let's go ahead and get started with that the first step is to create the menu drop down items so to do that we're going to go to the dashboard go to appearance and go to elements under the cadence menu item okay so here we are we're going to click on add new and we want a content section from the element setup options that pops up we're going to be utilizing a content section let's go ahead and give this a title this will only be visible to to you it will not be visible to the on the front end so we'll call this custom drop down all right so now that we have that, now let's go ahead and build the drop down elements inside. Okay, so the first thing we want is a container, and the container we're going to use is going to be a section. So if you click this plus sign, this will open up all the blocks that are available to you. And one of the cool blocks that Cadence has is a section block. This is a container block. And basically, what this means is it can contain other blocks. So let's go ahead and drag that into the main area here. Whoops. Let's drag that in. There it is. Okay, so we have a section. Next, we need to put the elements inside of the section. And the element that we're going to be using is, or the block that we're going to be using, is going to be the info box block, which is this one right here. Just go ahead and drag that in. Just like that. Okay, and that is all we'll need from the Gutenberg inserter there. Now we have uh, everything that we need. We have an icon. We have a a title or a menu item and we have a description so now we just need to design and configure this and then replicate it a few times and we have our drop down so let's go ahead and do that right now so I'm gonna go ahead and select the info box and then over here on the right yeah, the info box presets and the info box settings and what I first thing that I want to do is I want to align everything to the left so over here under content align go ahead and click on that to align it to the left the next thing that I want to do is I want to uh, work on the icon. Okay, so we're going to go here to media settings and I want the icon to be floated to the left of the information and then I want the vertical alignment to be at the top. Excellent. And then I want to reduce the size of that icon. So let's see how it looks at 25 pixels. That looks good, but maybe it's a little too small. Let's go with 30. And that looks great. All right, next let's work on the menu item, which here is classified as the title. And let's just get, let's just call this uh, barbecue and beer. Okay, so barbecue and beer. And uh, with that one, we're going to go ahead and over here on the right hand side, just scroll down till you see the title settings. Open that up, and under the title settings, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the size. To 20 pixels okay actually let's make it slightly bigger let's go 24 pixels okay that looks a lot better okay so 24 pixels and then to keep everything even I'm going to make my icon also 24 pixels you can always change this later if you want all right that looks good then the other thing that I want to do actually with this with this icon I noticed that there's some spacing here that's happening so we're gonna fix that so let's just scroll down under the under the media settings, scroll down till you get to the media margin. And what I want to do is I want to lim eliminate this left side margin. The left side margin is a box all the way to the right, to the far right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and highlight that and place a zero there. And that pushes everything a little more to the left. And then the next thing that I want to do here is I want to address the media padding. So that's creating some padding around here. So I'm going to open up, I'm going to open this so it's more individualized and I can see each part of the padding. And on the left hand side again, I'm going to add a zero there. Great. And then on the media padding up for the top, I'm going to reduce this to five pixels so that it lines up nicely with my, uh, with my title information here, with my menu item. Okay. And now this looks good. So next, I need to work on the description for the submenu item, right? So I'm going to scroll down my settings, look for text settings, open it. And then here, we're going to set this to 14 pixels. So it looks pretty small, which is great. And then we're also going to make this a little bit of a lighter color. 
kind of like that. So this will do. And for right now, this actually looks good. So we are almost ready for for replicating each one of these. Now, this has a background to it. It has a gray background. We don't want that. So make sure you select the info box, scroll all the way to the top, look for the container settings. We're going to come over here to the container background. I'm going to select it and I want the background to be white. Okay. I also want the container border. Uh, we're going to, we're going to make this container border a little darker. So let's go with D D D and we can just do that six times. Okay. And that'll give us a darker border. We also have to set the, the hover element, right? The hover state of this. So we're going to click over to hover and the hover background is also going to be white because we don't want that. We'll make sure to handle the hovering effects on the text. Okay. And then the hover border here, we're going to set this to D as well. Six D's will give us a nice gray color. And then up here under the container border width, we're going to open this up so we can see each individual uh, side and we want the bottom side. So for those of you who may not know, this is top, right, bottom, left. So it kind of goes clockwise. So if this was a box, this is top, right, bottom, left. That's how these work. So here on the bottom, I want to set that to uh, one. So that's immediately going to give me a line, but I only want this line to show up when I hover over the item. Okay. I don't want it showing up all the time. So I'm going to go back over here to the right, scroll down, make sure you're in the container settings, select the normal state. And here where it says container border, click on the color and set it to white. And this way, when you hover, it's going to go gray. So if I hover now, you can see the gray showing up. Okay. All right. Next, let's go ahead and handle the hover state for the icon and the uh, menu item. So back to the info box, make sure you're in the settings panel, scroll down, look for your title text settings. Whoops. Looks like I passed that. Just close this. Here we go. Title settings. And we're going to set the title color to our highlight color. Okay. And let's set the hover to a highlight hover. I think that looks pretty good like that. That looks really good. I'm going to set up the media settings or the icon. And what I want to do is I want the icon color to remain black. But on hover, I want it to match the text. So on hover, we're going to select the icon hover color. So right, we're here in the hover state. Select the icon hover color, and we're going to set that to our highlight hover. Okay, and so when we hover over that, it has that effect. Awesome. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and save my work. Okay, and I'm checking out to make sure that everything is behaving the way that I want it to, and it is. All right, so the next thing that we need to do now is we need to replicate this exact menu item about five times, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select it, and then I'm going to open up the options by clicking on the vertical ellipses here. And when you open that up, look for the duplicate menu item, and then we'll click on that, and then we'll just repeat that. All right, so we have it replicated five times. All right, now that we have that, let's go ahead and update. Okay, so our menu items are now created. There's an extra block over here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Uh, go ahead and select it and hit the delete key. That way, all we have here now, if we open up list view, we should just have a section. And inside of that section, we should have five menu items. Okay. And if we want our menu items to match what, what we're following here, so if we go over here and we open this up, we have barbecue, beer and barbecue, music, sponsorship, frequently asked questions, and blog. Okay, so let's go ahead and match that. So we have music, sponsorships, 
frequently asked questions, and blog. All right. Save our work. And now we'll move on to the next step of getting this to become the actual menu uh, in our dropdown. All right, so to make this an active dropdown menu, there are two things that we have to do now that we've created the entire element. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure to let the website know that we want this to show up anywhere that the menu item is and whenever somebody hovers over that. Since we've created this element, that means we have to set up some display rules for it, okay? So if you go over here to the settings, the element settings, and you select that, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna ignore the placement and we're gonna go to the display settings. Under the display settings, we're gonna say we want this to show on and there's a lot of options here where this can show on, but we want this on the entire site. So select the entire site. We're gonna go ahead and click on update to save our selection. All right, and now we're ready to go ahead and add this section to the menu, okay? So to do that, go ahead and exit out of this by clicking on the WordPress icon here. That'll take you to the dashboard. And then we're, we're gonna go to menus. Make sure that you're looking at the primary menu in this case, uh, or whatever menu that you have that has your main menu items, okay? And we wanna configure this under the pricing menu. So I'm gonna open up the pricing menu here in the list, and I'm gonna select menu item settings. Once here, you're gonna go over to the mega settings and we want to enable the mega menu dropdown. All right, now that we've enabled this, let's go ahead and adjust some of these settings. The mega menu width we want, we actually want this to be a custom width. So there's an option for it to be the full menu container width, a full width menu or a custom width. We want the custom width. All right, and then here we're going to adjust the width. Let's set this to 375 pixels. And then the mega menu columns, well, we only have one column, so we're gonna make this one column. Okay, and then everything else, we're gonna leave alone, at least for now. So save and close, and then save the menu. Okay, so now our menu is saved. Next, we need to add our element to this menu. To do that, move over here to the left, click on custom links. In the URL field, we're gonna add a hashtag and for the link text here, we're gonna call this one our custom dropdown and add to the menu. And then we're gonna drag it directly under the pricing and we're gonna shift it over ever so slightly so that it recognizes it as a dropdown, okay? Then we're gonna open this up and you'll notice when you open this up initially, there is no menu item settings here, okay? That's because we have to save it first in order for us to see that. So let's go ahead and save the menu. All right, now we've saved the menu, and if you open up that same link, you'll now notice that we have menu item settings available. So go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna go straight to the mega settings, and you're gonna enable your custom content, and then we're gonna, it's gonna ask us to use a custom element, and when you hit the dropdown, you'll see the custom dropdown menu we created. Go ahead and select that and then click on save and close, and then save your menu. All right, now that the menu is saved, we're gonna go ahead and go to the front end to make sure that our changes were, that it recognized our changes, okay? So now we can see under the pricing, we do have a drop-down indicator right next to it, and when you hover over it, there's our menu. There's our custom menu with the title, icon, and little description for each item, okay? I can also see that when I hover, the icon is changing color and the bottom border is showing up, okay? So this looks good so far. The next thing that we need to do now is we just need to customize this a little bit to make it uh, as close to what we have over here on the cadence page right over here, like that, as possible, right? Okay, so let's go back to ours. That looks good. Let's go ahead and now and, uh, and customize this and make it look good. All right, so now we need to make some customizations and some design changes to this to make it look more presentable. If we take a look at the one that's on Cadence right now, 
One of the things that you'll notice is when you hover over the main item here, you have nice rounded edges on the main container there for the drop down. We also have this really nice arrow that's pointing up to the main menu item as well. So we're going to create that same effect. And don't worry, we're going to do all of this without any coding. This is gonna, all going to be completely block based. So everyone will be able to do this. All right. And then the other thing is the menu items themselves. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and swap colors so that my menu items are darker and the icons remain sort of the same highlight color. Okay. That's just going to make it much, much nicer and a lot neater. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to reduce the number of text, the amount of text that we have on ours. We actually have quite a bit of text going, so it's making our drop down pretty long. So we're going to go ahead and fix all that. And let's just go ahead and do that right now. So you're going to go back to your dashboard and we're going to go to appearance, cadence, elements and then we're going to click on edit on our custom drop down menu and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to trim down the uh, amount of text that we have here so i'm going to go ahead and highlight about half of this and delete and i'll do that for each one all right now that we've done that i'm going to go ahead and update this element and then i'm going to go back to the front end refresh the screen and take a look at how that looks okay that looks a lot neater uh, a lot cleaner as well okay the other thing is that the content is a little bit closer together. Okay, so on ours, we have actually quite a bit of spacing going on here. So let's go ahead and reduce the spacing for each one of our uh, menu items. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the element here and I'm gonna select the first info box and I'm just gonna place my cursor next to the title. I'll move over to the right here where we have the block settings and I'm gonna look for the title settings. Let's open that up. Okay, and inside of the title settings, there should be a margin set up here. So here it is right here. And I can see that the margin bottom is 10 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and zero that out. That's going to bring it a lot closer. Okay. So that looks really good. Um, let's take a look at the text settings here. Text settings also has margin and padding, but we'll leave that alone. I think this looks great. So now the other thing that I want to do is I want the text, the title text to actually be dark while the icon will be the highlight color. So I'm going to select my icon again, go back to my title settings, which is right over here. We're going to change this color to a darker color. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the uh, hover state and make sure that that's a highlight color. And it is, then I'm going to go to my media and the media or the icon under my media settings, I'm going to scroll down and look for the icon color. And we're going to change that to our highlight color. So it looks like that. And then make sure that the hover is also a highlight color or the highlight hover color, which is this one right here. And I think now I'm pretty happy with the way the uh, menu item, the drop down menu item is functioning. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do now is I want to make sure that all my other menu items function the same way. So I'm noticing here that there's a slight misalignment here between the icon and the title. And that's just, that could be because they're different sizes or uh, there's some spacing issues here. So I'm going to go back over here to the right hand side for the info box. And I'm going to go find my media settings, which is right here. And here's my icon. And I'm going to look specifically, I'm looking for the media margin. And right over here, I can see that it's set to zero. So I'm going to change this, the top one to two. Okay. It's very important that the spacing looks just right. Okay. That looks good. That looks like that everything is in line now. Okay. All right. And so now that we have this, we've made these changes. Now we need to apply the same changes to all of the other uh, menu items. Now what's really cool about cadence blocks is that we have this, every time you select a block, for some of the blocks, you have this copy paste styles option. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that copy paste styles for the block where I made all the changes. And then I'm going to move down to one where I didn't make the changes. So this one, and I'm going to select the copy paste style icon here, and I'm going to click on paste styles. And as soon as I, as soon as I do that, everything is going to mirror what I had here. Copy styles paste styles. Okay. So everything mirrors what I have here. If I do it again, paste styles and everything matches up. 
it saves you a lot of time. All right, so now everything looks pretty good, nice and uniform. I'm gonna go ahead and update this. And then if we go to the front end, refresh the screen, hover over pricing, we can see now that everything looks really good. Nice and uniform and behaving correctly. Great. Now the other thing that we need to do now is we need to implement those rounded corners. So those beautiful rounded corners that we see here. Okay, I wanted to implement that. And we also need to implement this little arrow pointing up to the main, main item. Okay, so I'll show you how to do this and you don't need to do any custom coding to do it. You can do it with custom coding, but uh, I wanna make this tutorial in such a way that even if you don't know how to code, you can still create uh, beautiful things like this uh, without coding. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. All right, so we're gonna go back to our element here. All right, and I'm gonna open up the list view. In the list view, I'm gonna select this section and I'm just gonna check my padding here. So uh, in your section, if you haven't done it already, make sure you have some good padding. I put about 24 pixels in there. And what I wanna do in this section is I'm gonna to go to the background settings. I'm gonna make sure that the background has a color. So it does, okay. Then I'm gonna to go to border styles. Okay, we're gonna set our rounded corners. So we're gonna set a border width of one pixel. So you can go ahead and unify this by clicking on the icon right here. That means that whatever you put in this box will apply to all the sides. So we'll make this one pixel. And then our border radius, we're gonna unify this as well, and we'll make this six pixels. Okay, let's go ahead and save our work. If we go and we check on the website right now, and refresh the screen here, okay, the rounded corners are there, but it's just not very obvious, right? You can't really see it because the background is also white, but it is there. So let's at least make sure we can see those rounded corners, okay? And the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna come over here to the customizer and I'm gonna go to the header and I'm gonna change the color of the header to a darker color. So you do that by going to the main row here, click on the cog wheel, go to design and you'll see the main row background. Okay, click on the color picker and we're gonna just select one of our colors here. That one, it's great. All right, so now that we've selected it, if you notice if I hover over the item, you can now see that rounded corner showing there, right? Okay, it was kind of blending, blending into the white before, but now we can see it clearly, okay? So we're gonna leave it like that. Go ahead and publish and close out of it. Okay, this looks pretty good. So we have our rounded corners. We have our uh, drop down menu. Now we need to add that arrow. So how are we gonna add that arrow without doing any custom coding? I will show you how, okay? We're gonna go right back to our element, which is over here. And if you don't know how to get back here, just in case, just go to your, um, just go to your dashboard, go to appearance, cadence, elements. You'll see that, you'll see that element that you created, that we created earlier. Click on edit and you're back here, okay? So open up list view, we need to create that, we need to create that arrow. So open up list view, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our section. Now what we want is we want an arrow to sit on top of, directly on top of this section here, okay? So we need to put a block, something, that's gonna be arrow-like that would sit up here. And I'm gonna show you exactly what. But before we do it, we actually need an external container. So let's go ahead and what I want you to do is in list view, click on the options for the section block here, this uh, vertical ellipsis. And I want you to click on insert before. That's gonna add a paragraph block right here, okay? Then go ahead and do a forward slash and type section. You will now see an option here for a section. Click on that option. So now we have a section sitting on top of our section. Okay, then the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna drag our earlier section into this outer section. Okay, and the way you do that is just go to list view, click on the section, which is gonna highlight the one we created before, and then you see this, uh, this drag icon, go ahead and drag it right inside and drop it in. Okay, you'll know you've dropped it in because when you look in your list view, you'll only see one section. But if you expand this section, you can see the second section inside of it. Okay, so this is exactly what we wanted. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put an element on top of this section that's gonna serve as our arrow. 
but just so that we can see things clearly, we're going to make a couple of changes. So I'm going to expand the section, the outer section, select our main section, which is on the inside, move over here to the right, go to border styles, and we're going to temporarily change the color of our border to black so we can see it. So you should see a nice rounded corner border there. Okay. Then the next thing that we're going to do is while this section is selected, I want you to go ahead and click on the options here, the ellipsis, and we're going to click on insert before. That's going to put a block directly on top of our section, but inside of the, the bigger section and do a forward slash and type icon. Okay. So here's the icon, click on it. And now that gives us, this is going to give us an icon. Okay. Then over here, we're going to go ahead and configure this icon. So move over to the right. We don't want this specific icon. I want you to delete this one, click in the box, and we're going to do a search for a carrot icon that is spelled C A R E T carrot and carrots. One of the carrots are these arrow looking tri triangles that point in different directions. Okay. And we're going to select this one that's pointing upwards just like that. Okay. So now that we have our arrow selected, we need to now make sure that our arrow can connect to the bottom section over here somehow. Okay. All right. So in looking at this, so you notice that there are no spacing settings for this icon. Uh, there's a style settings, but there are no spacing settings, but that's okay. One of the best things about uh, one of the awesome things about uh, Cadence is that you can actually add spacing settings to anything by adding a section. Okay. Now we're not going to do that in this case because we already have a section here. So we're going to go ahead and select our earlier section that how this housing all our drop down items. We're going to select that. We're going to move over to the right. Look for the padding and margin. Open it up. And here where we have the margin, we're going to put our cursor in the top margin and we're going to do negative 27. Okay. All right. Now next, go ahead and select your icon and let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's make it 45 pixels. So it's not so big. There we go. All right. And so far this looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and save my work by clicking update. And then we're going to look at the front end. We'll go back to the front end of the website. I'm going to refresh this because I just have it, have it open in a separate tab. And I'm going to hover over the pricing. And you notice that when I do that, we can see that our arrow is sitting nicely on top of our drop, drop down menu items. Okay. That looks really good. So what we want to do though, is there is a lot of space here between the pricing and the actual drop downs. It's, it's too much. So what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to shift this up a little bit. So let's go back to our element and we're going to select that outer section, go to padding and margin. And on the margin top, I'm going to do a negative 30 pixels, click on update. And when we go back to the front end, refresh the screen, we hover over, we can see it's placed really nicely underneath that menu item. Okay. And that looks really good. The next thing that we need to do now is we need to make it all, uh, you can leave it like this if you want to. It's actually kind of nice having that, having that like that, but I want it to look the same way that the folks at Cadence have theirs, right? So it's all white, it's all blended in, it looks really good. That's going to be really easy for us to, to do. All we need to do is go back to our element, select our icon, scroll down, look for the icon color, change that to white. We're going to select our section that is housing our menu items. Come over here to the border color. Select it, change that to white, click on update. Okay. And when we go to the front end of the website, refresh, hover over the pricing and there you have it. It looks exactly the same, if not identical to the one that we have on the cadence website, except it's designed for our website. Okay. And that is how you create a custom drop down menu and you can create as many of these as you want. You can swap them out and you can add it pretty much anything you want in here, but you kind of get the general idea of how to create these for yourself. And with that, 
that will bring this tutorial to a close. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you really like this tutorial, please go ahead and give it a like. Smash that like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you felt about it. And please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so that you can get notified. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I release a new tutorial. Okay, thank you very much for those of you who have been supporting and watching my videos. I really appreciate you. And those of you who have not picked up Cadence, I highly recommend that you pick it up because you can literally build any kind of website and do almost anything with it uh, if you just know how. And I plan on releasing more tutorials as we continue to progress throughout the year, okay? So once again, thank you very much. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. If it was, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, also pop that in the comments. And again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and I will see you in the next video. Actually, actually, wait, wait, not, not so fast. I almost forgot. We actually need to configure this for mobile devices, right? So we want this to also look good on on a mobile device. So let's go ahead and set that up and then we can close out the tutorial. It won't take that long. All right, so what we need to do now is, you know, we know that this looks good on our desktop, but if we take a look at this on our phones, so let's go ahead and uh, open up the inspector here in Chrome, select our phone simulator, our mobile device simulator, excuse me. And when I open up the menu, we can see here that it's a little scrunched up. It's it's uh, it's a little strange, okay? What we we'll wanna do is we want this to be at least a little bit more spread out, a little bit more uh, breathing room here, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, fix that. So I'm gonna close this out and we're gonna go back to our uh, drop down menu. Just go ahead and open up the list view. We're gonna open up to our section that contains our drop down menu. While we're in here, we're gonna go over to the right hand side, open up your padding and margin. And what we wanna do is we wanna select the mobile options here, the mobile viewports. Okay, so if we take a look at this on a mobile device, while we're here, we wanna make sure that there is no padding, actually very little padding. So I'm gonna go ahead and unify this and I'll make the padding 12 pixels all around. Okay, so it's about half. All right, then the other thing that I notice is that there's also uh, a lot of padding going on in the main items themselves, and so in these info boxes that we chose. So I'm gonna select the first one. And over here on the right, I'm gonna go to container settings. I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna look for the container padding, which is this right here. I'm gonna open it up so that I'm looking at multiple, at all the different sides, and I'm only interested in the right and left uh, padding, okay? So I'm gonna set this to five pixels and the left to five pixels. You can see that gives us a little bit more expansion here. All right, but actually because we have those 12 pixels for this section, let's just go ahead and zero this out, but only on the left and the right, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing for each one. Open up the container, scroll down, make sure that you have the mobile viewport selected, okay? set it to the individual sides, and then go ahead and add your values. So we're gonna zero out the right and left. Container, padding, right and left zero. Okay, and that's it. That should look a lot better now on our mobile devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this, go back to the front end, refresh the screen, Let's go back to the home page here. Okay, so here's how it looks on the desktop. And when we look at it on the mobile device, and we open up our menu, you can see it looks a lot better, a lot more presentable, not as scrunched up. All right, and with that, that will bring this tutorial to a close. Again, if you like this tutorial, please go ahead and give it a like. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave that in the comment section below. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel so, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified every time I release a video. More Cadence videos are coming and I look forward to showing you more cool tips and tricks of Cadence and I will see you in the next video. For real this time.